and it begins, baby. The main plot. You know, as always, I would look forward to the last three episodes of every season of Strike Witches. You know why? Because we get good, the good stuff. We get where the budget is really put on. You get to see that. Don't be wrong. The budget was um, stretched throughout the series. We, especially the, when Barkhorn was fighting that one Neuroi hand to hand. That was pretty epic. And of course, the first couple episodes were good as well. The other ones were okay here and there. But towards the end, this is where we get the good stuff. Real good stuff, man. So, finally, Operation Southwind can finally begin. And of course, Mia Fuji this time will be one of the key points. Hang towards the Norway Ness, trying to take back Berlin. They know that Norway will do whatever they can, full power, to, to take them out of the sky. Since Mia Fuji has the highest magical capacity, it's only reasonable that she can also create giant shields. It's only, you know, reasonable that she's the key point. She will be a shield pushing them towards the closure and closure towards the nest. While finally, the pilots can drop their bombs to really take out the narrow eye. Good plan. But of course, things never go the way they're supposed to. Never, ever, ever. It's also about um, Shizuka as well. And how um, it was a natural trust. You know, Chizuka, since the movie, since she was introduced, always looked up to Mia Fuji. She looked up to her through hearing stories about her. Then when she finally met her, it wasn't everything as she thought Mia Fuji would be. Until towards the end of the movie, she truly understand the greatness that was Mia Fuji. And now here we are. Where now she understands Mia Fuji. She knows what she's about. And also her own way of doing things. You know, she's kind of as a girl who does orders. She's all about them orders, you know. And I can agree, I can really relate that, you know. Sometimes you're not a person that always freely thinks. You like to follow some orders. You like some law in your life. That's exactly who she is. But I think I'm getting off point here. The fact is, is that the order is to have Mia Fuji be protected at all costs. And things kind of turned around during the first day of the attack. And this is where Mia Fuji did something that we never thought she would ever do. Obey orders. Don't charge in. Stand down. Retreat. None of us thought Mia Fuji would listen to that. But then Chizuka was like, do you not trust in my power? Do you not believe in me? You're not listening to what I say, saying you do not believe that I can handle this on my own. Do you not, I believe in you, do you believe in me? And that's where it came down to, you know? Mia Fuji had that thought, like, wow, I never thought about it like that. And she listened. She actually backed down, everyone was shocked and <laughs> talking about it. <laughs> of course, they lost, but they were able to get some very interesting information about it. Then of course they still needed maybe Fuji. She needed the rest. She only had eighty percent on the next day. And then again, it was the censorship as well. Because you know, she's kind of was in the papers after defeating that narrow on her own. And there made it sound like good things were happening, but it wasn't. It was a sort of propaganda that did censorship, or Barcorn who said censorship. No one likes censorship, but sometimes, I don't know, is censorship needed? Sometimes, I don't know, it's a very gray area. Say you're in war, you need morale, not just for troops, but for the people too. And you'll be surprised how sometimes, well, especially back in the day, where troop morale and citizen morale was very important. Back in the day, um... The, the soldiers and the citizens had a very good connection. Not because they're families, but they're also supporters and resources. People had a certain urge wanting to help out their troops by donating, creating, cooking, all kind of things they would do. They would send them posters and flyers, anything they can do to help out a soldier in the past. I'm pretty sure they do it now, but do they do it as much as they used to? Sometimes I feel like people really don't um, really look up to the military like they used to back in the day, you know, that 
good old patriotism that seems to be slowly slipping away in some areas, unfortunately. And you'll be surprised how sometimes those little things can really keep a guy going sometimes. Knowing someone out there cares them, knowing that they're out in this battlefield and someone really appreciates it. You know, they're not out there just for no reason or because of orders. They're doing it for people who actually have their back. Am I getting off subject? Yeah. But I'm just talking about the paper, you know, that, that I was talking about, you know. Those things I like to talk about a lot. But now it's back on topic. The next time, they want Mia Fuji not to use any more magical power because they really, really need her. So, she didn't do it, even though she was on her way with the Norway attack. But nope, she stand down. She listened to Mina as well. So, they're all doing their attack. But a very powerful advantage, Norway came out and started attacking them. And this Norway is using a shield to a point where um, she got, got knocked out, man. She got damaged by a leg. Nothing vital, but still unconscious. And they couldn't do it. The Norway were about to do suicide bombing or a suicide attack. And... If it wasn't for me and Fuji, none of this would have happened, but me and Fuji's power. And I did I know I was complaining about the series about the dropping of the power to magical pressure. But then yet again, you have to remember maybe she wasn't truly meant to have her magical power back. Remember um the near the end well the end of season two, where she used the blade of um Sakamoto to destroy the giant core. And because of that, she lost her power. She gained her power in a way through in a movie and towards the end, in a way kind of like through brute force in a way, is back, but it's not the way it used to be. You know where she can just freely use it anytime she wants to. So, so pretty much the effects of the the events of season two are still into effect even past the movie into season three. She has her powers back, but she can't use them as much as she wants to. She isn't as powerful as she used to be. You know, she can release that power. She only used it for a short while. In a way, kind of like Accelerator, you know. Before all that, Accelerator was extremely powerful, and then the incident happened, and now he has to rely on a battery in order for his brain to function, in order for him to use his vector power. That's just how it is. You know, it's a drawback. You know, it, it gives her a struggle, a challenge. And throughout the series, throughout the season, I've appreciated it now. I really do. You know, first I'm like, oh my god, please don't tell me when Drag is on. But then I start to realize about season two that this is actually good storytelling in a way. You know, imagine she's got her powers back. This BS. No drawbacks, no consequences, and she's off uh, being her old powerful self again. It shouldn't work like that. But Sakamoto lost her powers too, and she can never get them back. So the fact that maybe Fujin got them back is a miracle, but his miracle came out of price. I understand that now. The entire time I've been complaining this entire season about the magical pressure stuff, I am sorry. I shouldn't complain about that. I'm just now realizing how important that really was when it comes to character development and stuff. Silly me. Anyway, this is like actually video. Um, we we you know we towards the end game people. I can't wait to see what happens. But even anyway, speaking of that, after the end game, I am really hoping that someday they'll do a World Witch um series or probably a. Uh, Noble Witch series, another Brave Witch series, Land Witch series. We, we got a lot of witch series out there, believe it or not. And it'll be nice to do one of them, or even a giant co uh, collaboration movie. You know, you have the Noble Witches, you have the Red Witches, you know, you, you have them all. It would be nice if we had that, but only time will tell. So anyways, I'm the heck out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon. This has been Matt Crowder on Anime, signing out.